Hi, everyone. My name is Chi. I'm a software engineer at, at Google, and I work on TensorBoard. And today I'm going to take you through a quick tour through how to debug, monitor, and examine your TensorFlow-based machine learning models using TensorBoard's suite of visualizations. They, they only gave me 10 minutes, so I'm going to assume some background in TensorFlow, as well as on convolutional neural nets. I'm also going to very quickly gloss over some code and leave that for the code lab and documentation. And let's see, today we're going to build this very simple model for classifying MNIST handwritten digits. This is a very classic uh, image recognition problem. It's a very simple model. We, we just have a convolutional layer and a fully connected layer. The first thing that we probably want to do is, of course, construct our model um, in, in TensorFlow. We build our graph, and then, and then we're going to validate that it's correct. Of course, TensorFlow is a graph-based API, so we, we first construct our graph using various ops. In this case, we, we introduce uh, this Conv2D op and a couple variables, as well as a fully connected layer. And then we're going to validate whether or not our graph is correct. And how we do that is we pass our graph into this file writer object that writes the graph to disk. And then TensorBoard will subsequently read that file, uh, that events file on disk, and visualize it within its Graph Explorer. And at a glance, this is our Graph Explorer. And it looks really chaotic, right? There are a lot of different ops. And if I look carefully, I can make sense of it. But really, this is pretty messy. So what I'm going to do is actually introduce uh, name scopes into my TensorFlow graph that bound uh, coherent pieces of logic together into scopes. And that's going to make our graph look a lot cleaner. Um, there we go. Kind of, it, it's more in line with your mental uh, kind of model of how this model um, works in terms of layers. If I want to further explore a certain op, I could expand an, a, a certain scope and highlight one of the ops. And for instance, look at, look at the type of tensor it's outputting, its inputs and outputs, and so on. Uh, so now that we have an idea of, of you know, how our model is generally constructed correctly, we can get to a more exciting stage of, of actually training the model and collecting data over time. And how we do that in, um, is we use this concept called summary ops. We, we add them to our TensorFlow graph. And they collect data over time across a series of steps. And the file writer, again, writes these events to disks to be read by TensorBoard. I'm going to collect, let's say, uh, some scalar data, accuracy, uh, as well as cross entropy, which my model is optimizing for. I'm going to collect some image data to validate that my input images, my handwritten uh, MNIST digits, are being fed into the model correctly. I could collect some audio data, but not today. But that's, that's useful, for instance, if you have an audio-based model. I'm going to also collect some histogram data that tells me the distributions of values of various tensors I'm interested in. For, ex for instance, maybe the weights of my, my layers, just to, see, just to help me monitor the, the model over time as it trains. And again, data is saved to a log directory. Uh, so let's see our, our images first. Um, they, they generally seem to be correctly inputted into the model. Uh, but when I look at my scalar data, I realize that my accuracy isn't really increasing over time. It's sort of, um, it sort of plateaus at this very uh, kind of tepid value of 0.11. So something is awry. If I go and look at my, my histograms uh, or my distributions dashboards, um, I realize that all my, my activations and weights are, are zero. And that kind of hints us at our error, which is that I accidentally forgot to uh, initialize these um, the, these variables with meaningful values, uh, I initialize them to zero. So we instead initialize these values using a truncated normal distribution. Uh, and then uh, let's see what happens next. So we, we rerun our model, and then we realize that accuracy still isn't really improving. Uh, but we can validate through the distributions dashboard that our weights perhaps look more reasonable. Um, but again, accuracy is increasing, some, isn't increasing, something is awry. We look at cross entropy and realize that we have numerical instability in our model. We have NAN values. Uh, something is definitely wrong there. And to, to debug this issue, I'm going to actually use a special feature of TensorBoard called the debugger dashboard. And how this works is I'm going to tell the debugger, TensorFlow debugger, to watch every single op in my graph and only halt execution when it encounters numerical instability. And the model is just going to run over time. The model is running. Um, at a slightly slower rate than usual in this debug mode. Um, but the usefulness of this comes out of how I can set um, certain breakpoints and, and pause um, under certain conditions. And so I'm just going to wait for the graph to, to uh, sorry, the debugger to halt. And indeed, it, it, it's telling me that at this op, the log op, um, this log op here is outputting NAN values. And I can view the values, uh, a visualization of the tensor outputs from that op. And the red here indicates NAN. So what's going on? Let's go back to the graph here and see what, what's actually the, the input into that log op. 
Um, it looks like that's this activation op right here. And uh, where is that? Uh, here it is. So we, then we can take a look at that op. And uh, these, this health pill indication here um, tells us that um, the, the dark gray there actually indicates zero. So that op is outputting zero. We're taking the log of zero. That's undefined. So that's producing the NAN values. And so to solve this problem, we, we bound uh, the input into the log op with a softmax function. And that's going to bound our, our uh, out input into that function uh, to zero and one exclusive. So that's going to give us valid values. So now that our graph uh, generally runs correctly, we can move on to, to more exciting things. For instance, we could still have some more fun with this um, debugger dashboard and maybe examine various um, layers just for fun. For instance, we could take a look at the max pool layer just to see how it looks like. Um, and this should be visualized, I believe, as an image. There we go. So it looks kind of like a smoothened uh, version of our digit, which is maybe what you kind of expect from a max pool operation. Um, just kind of fun there. Um, other things that we can do are uh, we can go back to our TensorFlow graph and perhaps examine performance. So for instance, we're interested in maybe looking at one of our, our runs uh, of, of TensorFlow. And for instance, we're interested in which ops take up the most time. We can visualize that. We can visualize which ops take up a lot of memory. Uh, we can also visualize what devices each of these ops run on. Um, in case, for instance, we, we were running on a GPU cluster. I'm not in this case, but, but that could, you could imagine how that could prove useful. Uh, we can also uh, do something else, which is we can optimize our parameters. So we could actually run TensorFlow, uh, our, our TensorFlow model, using various, for instance, learning rates and, and, and dropout rates, and then compare them, um, and then visualize them within a single tensor board. So for instance, here we can, we can kind of zoom in our scalars charts and see how our different runs are doing. Um, if we're not satisfied by point metrics, we can also utilize precision recall curves to, to evaluate trade-offs between precision and recall. Uh, this is, I think, a pretty uh, standard sort of a, a, a challenge in data science. We sometimes have to uh, make this trade-off between precision and recall. Uh, maybe to put it concretely, one example of this is, say we're developing a model to detect cancer cells. Do we value our model being able to recall as many cancer cells as possible among all true cancer cells? Or do we value our model being more precise about what it deems to be a cancer cell uh, out of all the, all the cells it does deem to be cancer cells. Uh, so TensorBoard lets you do that. The one last feature I want to sort of demo to you guys is the embedding projector, which embeds um, arbitrary tensors of, of various dimensions into this 3D space. In this case, I'm visualizing an embedding of the digits. And I can maybe make this more lucid by, by coloring by label and then turning on night mode. And I can sort of just explore this data set a little bit uh, you can see how maybe the, the nines and the fours are kind of close together. There are a couple of them interspersed um, close to each other. Uh, you could also use a different uh, dimensionality reduction technique, such as T-SNE. Uh, there are drawbacks and, and, and pros to that technique as well. Uh, so in general, TensorBoard contains all these rich visualizations to help you um, kind of explore your data, monitor, and examine your model. Um, and I, I hope they help you with your machine learning endeavors. The last thing I want to mention is this is really a team effort. Um, some other contributors are not listed here, including me. Whoops. Um, and for more information, uh, please refer to our, our GitHub repository, TensorFlow slash TensorBoard. Thank you.